Have you noticed more birds in your neighborhood during the spring or fall? Maybe you've seen them flying overhead or heard them singing up a storm in the morning? You're not imagining things. Migration is underway. Nebraska is home to more than 400 species of birds. And during our cold, bugless winters, less than half of those species stick around our state. So how do the rest of the species survive winter? They migrate. Understanding when, how, and where birds migrate helps us better understand the amazing life of birds and what we can do to protect them. One way scientists learn more about bird migration is through bird banding stations. What happens at a banding station? Let's find out. At a banding station, there are special scientists called bird banders. To be a bird bander, you need a special scientific permit and a lot of experience and training. This assures each bird is handled with care and expertise, and their safety is always top priority. Banders place bracelet-like aluminum bands with a unique number on birds that pass through the station. But before they can ban the birds, they have to catch them first. To do that, lightweight, hard-to-see mist nets are put up in areas with great bird habitat, often found along known migration routes. Birds passing by might not be able to see the nearly invisible net, causing them to fly in and land in its pockets like a hammock. A bird bander does a net run by checking the nets carefully every 15 minutes for birds. If a bird has been caught, the bander carefully and expertly untangles the bird and places it safely in a breathable cloth bag. All the nets have been checked, several birds have been caught, now it's banding and measuring time. First, the bander gently places a light aluminum bracelet-like band around the bird's leg. Remember the unique number we mentioned? This number is recorded in a data sheet alongside the bird's species code, location, and measurements. Data recorded at banding stations across the country are all sent to the USGS Bird Banning Laboratory database. So if this bird happens to get caught again, say at another banding station 300 miles south, Scientists from that station can look up this number, compare the bird's movements over the years, and add to their knowledge of how far and where this bird journeys during migration. Once the bird is banded, the bander sets to work taking measurements that tell us about the bird's age, health, if it's a male or female, and its overall condition. This includes measuring the length of the wings, the tail, weighing the bird, and even checking its belly for fat. This tells us how much energy it has stored up for its long journey. The last step, of course, letting the bird go, watching it fly off to continue on its migration journey. Bird banding has been around for over 100 years now, and through this method, scientists have learned a lot about bird populations, migration routes, critical habitats, and more. The more we understand about birds, the better we can understand how to protect them, assuring thriving bird populations for the future. So next time you see new feathered friends visiting your area in the fall or spring, take a closer look at their leg for a special band and wish them luck on the rest of their migration journey.